Hello, welcome to episode 11 of the Two Minute Vinyl Review. I am your host, Sam the Record Man, and we are vinyl junkies. I'm looking really forward to telling you about this one. Um, it's a review of a record that half of you watching right now will hate on contact. It's just one of those records that splits people in half, and the other half of the people will tell you that it's an absolute masterpiece. So I'll tell you why it is that I like it, and uh, you guys can see for yourself because there are listen links, right? Uh, the reason I meant I picked this record to begin with is because uh, the upcoming record store day uh, has a reissue of this exact record that I have right here, Trout Mat Mask Replica, which was uh, reissued uh, by Third Man Records last year as part of their club. Now, the reason I'm pointing this out when I had already a copy of it, I've had this record for ages, um, is because, I mean, even with just the camera, you can see that the cover that I'm holding is clear. Uh, this record has not sounded good in a lot of cases. So what TMR did was they got the master tapes and they got the original photograph, not photocopies, like the co a copy that uh, you're seeing there near the, the record, but and recreated it as close to perfect to the original pressing as you can get. And as far as I'm concerned, that's even better to own than an original press because chances are original presses aren't going to be perfect. This came brand new, so it was. Now, they added a bunch of things that weren't there before. For one thing was there uh, in the original is a little art book from uh, Beefheart that was included as well. So they recreated that and included is a poem, an ode to... Um, Jack White written, uh, sorry, a note to Captain Beefheart written by Jack White, who worshipped him. Uh, a tote bag. Also very cool. The lighting isn't very good, so you can't see it. And perhaps the coolest thing that wasn't there, but a replica trout mask, which you can detach and wear. Uh, I thought this was the coolest part of the bundle. Now, you know how you guys are always looking for records that aren't the same old all the time and you don't like you know the fact that a lot of the majors are releasing the same stuff over and over again i'm telling you that this here if you are even moderately interested in something that's not melodic or something that really veers from the norm you want a copy of trout mask replica now this will disappear Immediately, there will be people in line looking specifically for this copy. Okay, uh, why? Because, like I said, it's it was taken from the master tapes. The original photo was used. It's going to be the best copy that you can get for the dollar. If anything, I hope that it doesn't come with the bag and some of the little extras because that means that it brings the price down, and um, you know it becomes more affordable. I think affordable is nice too. Now. John Peel has called this record an, an idol of mine. John Peel has called this a Dadaist masterpiece and basically worshipped uh, Captain Beefheart, and a lot of people did, including uh, his arch-rival Frank Zappa. They very much had a love-hate relationship. Frank Zappa and Beefheart grew up in the desert together, and uh, <clears throat> Beefheart was precocious, and I think it was obvious that the guy had kind of like a genius streak in him very early, so his parents were very, very free and let him do whatever he wants. So what Frank Zappa would do is just go over to the house and they'd listen to blues 45s over and over and over again. Memorize the runouts, memorize catalog numbers, everything. So that's the base of this music. Okay, Now, when this came out, uh, Peel calling it a dataist masterpiece is something that's so on. Dataism was a uh, art movement that came as a result of, uh, as basically a backlash or a protest to the atrocity, uh, atrocities of World War One. And one of the main things about it is that it often mocks what is quote unquote normal or exaggerates it or just basically moves it out of reality, distorts it. It would eventually move uh, the art movement to, you know, have influence on stuff like cubism and surrealism and all postmodernism. So uh, to hear Trout Mask Replica 
described that way makes perfect sense, and I'll tell you why. I see music. What it is that I like about weird music is that I just see music and. Coltrane, as far as I know, Ravi Coltrane, uh, John Coltrane's son, said that John Coltrane used to see music the same way, kind of like in terms of units, right? These kind of building blocks that you put together in order to create something that's unique. But the building blocks were there. So if you look at that, uh, considering that Beefheart did become a sculpture, uh, a world-renowned artist, and, um, you know, that's where his bent was to begin with, it makes perfect sense that he would... Uh, de not decompose, but he would just take apart the English language and put it together in the way that he did on Trout Mask Replica. None of this will make sense. Like I said, if you're looking for just straight a beat, forget it. If you like um, avant-garde jazz, you're going to dig it. If you can understand Ornette Coleman, you might dig it. If you like the idea of blues, old blues being attached to that, hey, that's one of those Lego pieces that Captain Beefheart puts together. Now, supposedly, he was maddening to be around because he used language <laughs> exactly like pieces and in exactly a dataist fashion. He just put words together. Uh, that didn't necessarily belong together. And he would go on forever and ever and drive people crazy with it. And you see this kind of thing on uh, this record, you know? So he'll talk about, uh, you know, taking a worm out of a crimped up tea can and then me and my girl named Bimbo, Limbo, Spam. And from there, he launches into a song about Dachau Blues. And of course, the most... Uh, <laughs> The most quoted line and something that I use all fast and bulbous, man. When you hear people say fast and bulbous, this is what it's about, man. Right here. That's right. The mascara snake. Fast and bulbous. Also, a tin teardrop. Bulbous, also tapered. That's right. You see? So if you hear anybody start talking that way, it's all from here. You're not supposed to understand it on first listen. I'm not sure that I would trust anybody who said that they got this record on first listen. It seems impossible. It made no sense to me. But that I was so interested in the pieces because listening to different music, you know, you catch different pieces. I was so interested that I've spent 25 years still discovering secrets, man. Um, it's... <laughs> This might be my favorite record, like actual record, you know, physical record of my entire collection. At least one of them. It is so well made. It sounds amazing. And it's something that I consider a masterpiece of musical art. And the fact that half of the world doesn't understand it pleases me to no end. So why don't you tell me your thoughts about the first time you listened to... Um, Trout Mask Replica. Have you heard it yet? If not, yeesh, get ready for it, man. There's going to be a link down there. Look for it on RSD 2019. Get in line. It's worth getting in line for, especially if you know uh, what the music is. Are there any other records you'd like to see me talk about? Uh, is there anything that I've missed? Please feel free to use the comments section to contribute towards the conversation. Subscribe to our two-minute review uh, playlist if you want to see more of these videos and subscribe to the channel. Sam, the record man, fast and bulbous. Also, a tin teardrop. <laughs>